How does one neglect and disvalue memories? Memories can be precious, so someone may want to remember parts of their life. It can be something that made you smile or a bad thing that taught you a lesson. Camp Buddy, on the other hand, is different. I think that Camp Buddy is a memory that must be exploded by millions of pipe bombs. Hello ladies and gents, Jason and Spades. I know I don't really make videos like this, but you've been warned. I know you have read the warning thing at the start of this video. Please tell me you have at least. Uh, so don't shit your pants about the content in here. Actually, I wouldn't blame you if you did. Anyway, um, I, where was I at? Right, so I happen to take interest in this topic, so, you know, decided to make a video on it evidently. What I'm here to discuss exactly is the games that Miku Kun has made, for anyone who isn't familiar with him, which is, you know, probably a lot of you. Miku Kun is a game developer and artist who makes yaoi games. In this video, I'll talk about three games he's made. Camp Buddy, its continuation is Capmaster Season, and Bachi Koi. Since Camp Buddy will be focused on the most out of the three, I'll give you a short summary. Camp Buddy was released on November 11th, 2018. The game focuses on Keiro, an over-optimistic amateur photographer. During summer break, his childhood friend Hiro brings him along to a summer camp. At said summer camp, Keiro meets nearly normal Natsumi, looks maxing Yao Fug Yacht Master Delinquent Yoichi. Hunter, the withdrawn artist- Oh, <laughs> stop! Wait, you get it because- <laughs> Because because he's an artist, you, you know, withdrawn. <laughs> that's so clever. Oh, wait. You know, uh, whatever. Maybe maybe that's not as good of a joke as I thought it was. Okay, moving on. Um, lastly, there's Redemption Route Taiga. These are Kato's love interests, and during the camp term, he'll make his greatest memories with one of them. That's cool and all, but there's a major problem with Camp Buddy. Shotokan. Or should I say, a minor problem? You get it. Because <laughs> the characters <laughs> they look like children. <laughs> oh, okay, whatever. Um you know, you know, forget it for guys anything. Not word Shotokan. If you're not familiar with what that is, I'm worried about the fact you're about to learn from this video, but I'm not exactly planning on taking this part out, so you know, um, let's just get on to doing a brief history of it. The word Shotokan itself was coined in the magazine Fan Road in 1981. For the Shotokan concept developed is hard to pinpoint exactly, but some of its earliest roots are in reader responses to detective series written by Edigawa Rampo. Shotokan itself is often used in Yaoi and BL, seen in a lot of kid next daddy tropes. Thanks for making me say that, Roman. The term Shotokan is a Japanese contraction of Shotaro complex, which refers to the young male character Shotaro from Tatsujin 28 Go, an anime and manga series. The character's cuteness embodies Shotokan. Funnily enough, it spawned from a close relationship between Shotaro and another character, neither of which were dating. The earliest Shotokan was in 1995. In 2008, over a thousand guests attended an event centered around this weird fantasy. In 2006, June released an English translation of Mako Takahashi's Naki Soyo, under the title Almost Crying, a non-erotic Shotokan manga. Although the book contains several stories featuring adolescent male characters, their relationships are not sexual. Shotokan aimed at male readers features heterosexual or homosexual relationships. Shota stories may be published in a subset of general seinen, which is just like adult content for men, manga anthologies, as well as a few seinen shota mangas anthologies, such as Shonen Ai No Aesthetics, which specializes in stories between men. Credits to my friend Roman for doing the research for this part. Now that we've caught up with the history of Shotokan, first I'll present this pie chart. Um, actually, you forgot one important detail! Mikokun himself has confirmed that they're over the age of 18 in their bios, so they are underage. Not to mention he has a disclaimer for the star of his games that says all the characters are over 18, so it only makes sense to take his word for it. You know what? You got me there. I'm I'm done for. I knew this video was a stupid idea. I mean, it's not like Mikokun would just say that so he doesn't look like a minor munching creep. That'd be <laughs> ridiculous. And besides, Mikokun has made it a point to make sure that everyone and their moms know those characters are over 18. But the teensy weensy itty bitty tiny little thing you forgot during the two years you took to develop Camp Buddy is that you can't just draw a character that looks like you just finished middle school. Slap an age between 18 and 20 onto them just so you can make NSFW art of them and call it a day. This is probably going to be the one time I'll have anything positive to say about Mikokun. He's incredibly talented and I know with the skills that he has, he's more than capable of drawing adults that actually look like adults. But unfortunately, a major part of Mikokun's greatest memories are the 50 Eight terabytes he's got saved. Hey, don't think I'm done with you, cause you know the characters are adults. They're just baby face. Oh sweet, you came back. Well, uh, I guess on that note, uh, I don't really have any experience making NSFW games, but 
I have an eco-friendly, gluten-free, charitable business plan that is absolutely genius and sure to make me one for office. You see, I prioritize making all my characters look like adults because why in the world would I make characters in an NSFW game perfectly look like children? I mean, that is literally what the argument insinuates. If that's true, then that means Miko kun deliberately made the characters look severely younger to a point where people mistake them to be minors. I don't get why you'd make characters in an NSFW game look baby-faced. I mean, if anything, it makes a whole lot more sense that you'd want your characters to look like adults. Sure saves you a whole lot less trouble. But if that really is the case, then that just further proves my point that Miko-kun thoroughly enjoys Shotokan. Moving on from the arguments, I read through the Camp Buddy journal, and Miko-kun had a whole lot to say about the character designs he made for the game. He seemed real particular about the details in the designs, and yet it must have slipped his mind to make the characters actually look like adults. I mean, seriously, there isn't a whole lot that can prove Miko-kun's innocence here. Even going back through the history of this game's development on his Facebook, I found more that adds up to a Shotokan fixation. One thing I found on the account that really piqued my interest were the several voice acting live streams I found from Dave Zultura. He's the voice actor of Hiro Yoichi and Camp Buddy. So, I was thinking we watched through these clips I found. And, uh, you know, uh, Hiro was, is, he's not a little boy, he's just, he's just a Shoda, that's all. A Shoda is literally a little boy. That's like if I said, this isn't an apple, it's a manzana. It's the same thing in different languages. Miko-kun, I, I am really honored for, you know, having the chance to play two really opposite characters. On one end, I have to do a Shoda. Great, another repeat of him insisting that Hero's a Shoda. Awesome sauce. You there, Miko-kun? You said you're at the live stream right now. I can see you at the bottom left. Hey, come on, Shota boy. Say something, Shota boy. I think Miko Kun being referred to as Shota boy is very telling, to say the least. Speaking of voice acting, on that same Facebook account, Miko Kun made a post to find voice actors for Camp Buddy, and I don't know about you guys, but it's strange that Miko Kun refers to the characters he claims to be over 18 as young boys and teens. It doesn't really look good seeing as the only two characters in this list confirmed to be adults. I mean, looking at Yeehaw and Grandpa over here, they're visibly adults compared to the other characters. Why not save yourself the trouble and just draw the rest of them like that? In addition to that, the characters being listed as young boys and teens heavily insinuates that they could be anywhere from the age of 9 to 17. It's easily the worst age range for characters to be in an NSFW game. While I'm at it, let me mention that the entire scout slash summer camp theme of Camp Buddy is weird in general. I've looked through quite a few Let's Plays of it, and the amount of times I've heard people question the characters being scouts despite being adults in other comments about Shotokan, or in relation to the characters possibly being minors, is insane. I'm kinda into that stuff. Quite an interesting hobby, isn't it? Not when it involves children you work with, no. No. Or youth. I, I guess, I don't know, like, they say that they're supposed to be 18, so I'm assuming that they're, like, maybe first-year university students. I think that they're keeping it ambiguous, so... Personally, I think that these are supposed to be teenagers. I know that in the very beginning where it's just like, everyone here is 18, and everyone here is of age. Bitch, I really hope that they're not like 16, 17 getting into that experimental phase. This next one here isn't a Camp Buddy gameplay, it's a Scatmaster season one, but it counts. I swear, it counts, it's relevant, I swear. It should be exciting because for the first time ever, um, Camp Buddy isn't gonna be a Shoda game. And, um, Camp Buddy is... Camp Buddy is Shoda. Some activities and also videoism. You get to see a lot of Shota cons. Always do your best to show your warmest smile. That's easier said than done, and if these guys are presumably young teenagers, question mark? You know, it's bad when the people who have bought the game and have taken the time to play it question the characters' ages too. I mean, it makes sense to question it. The first definition of a summer camp that I found stated this. A camp providing recreational and athletic facilities for children during the summer vacation period. Now, I'm sure you know that key word, children. So, what business does supposedly grown men have in a summer camp? I find it really weird that Miko-kun particularly chose a setting that's heavily associated with children. Back to referencing Miko-kun's journal, which I'll explain the entirety of later, I swear. He states an initial idea was to have the game take place in a school setting. Not a university, a school. Another setting heavily associated with children. Once again, if you just look at the definition of a school, here's what you'll get. An institution for educating children. Once again, we're getting that key word, children. To be fair though, if you look right under that definition and go to synonyms, you'll see college. Even so, the general age to be in college is like 18 and older. However, since Miko-kun is in the Philippines, or at least I'm pretty sure he is, I'm sorry if I got that wrong, 
It's possible his first language is in English, so he might not know the difference between school and college, so I can also give him the benefit of the doubt for that. But if that's not the case, I don't know why else when describing adult characters in an educational setting you'd use the word school. Really interesting word choice. Also, speaking of school, I noticed in a Let's Play of Yoichi's route, Kitaru had a school uniform on. Now, I wouldn't care about this if it weren't for the fact that this uniform is a Gakuran, a uniform worn by middle to high school aged boys. Kateru was 19, so unless he has to repeat a year or a few in school or something, I have no clue why he's wearing that. At the end of the game, when the summer camp term is ending, a lot of characters mention that they also have to go back to school as well. Interesting. Also, I wasn't sure about what section of the video I should ask this question, but I've heard over and over again that Miko kun initially made the characters underage, but changed their ages because he wouldn't be able to sell his game if he kept them underage, and I guess want to stay out of controversy as well. I haven't really gotten a credible source for this information, but if anyone has any answers that'll help out with that, then I appreciate you comment about it. Now, I want to get back to the Boy Scout stuff in particular, because I wanted to look over some first-hand sources that would give me some helpful information. You know, oddly enough, I'm friends with two people in Boy Scouts, so I decided to interview the two of them for this video. Starting off with Lieutenant Muffin. Alright, question one, how long have you been in Boy Scouts? Oh wow, that's a long time. So, what is the cutoff age for being a Boy Scout? Hmm, okay, so what activities are usually done in Boy Scouts? That checks out. So, is it possible to be a Boy Scout after the cutoff age? Lastly, I'd like to know, how gay is Boy Scouts? Alright, well thank you for your time, Muffin. I'll be moving on to Cauliflower now. Alright, let's switch up the questions here. So what activities are usually done in Boy Scouts? <laughs> Man of very few words, huh? So, how long have you been in Boy Scouts? <laughs> um, just, just asking to ask here, so uh, how gay is Boy Scouts? <laughs> ah, interesting. What's the cutoff age for being a Boy Scout? <laughs> And to end up this interview, I'd like to ask, is it possible to be a Boy Scout after the cutoff age? <laughs> Alright, that's about it. Thank you, Cauliflower. Now I'll be going over my thoughts on those interviews. Firstly, I noticed there's an agreement on the cutoff age being 18. Even with the exceptions for being involved in the camp after turning 18, doesn't back up the camp buddy characters for being adults. For one, it doesn't look like they're happening behind the scenes, because they're literally signed up for the camp. And unless it's a camp for intellectually challenged individuals, then in that case, their ages make perfect sense, along with the school uniform stuff I mentioned a moment ago. As much as the interviews helped and I really appreciate Muffin and Cauliflower for sitting through my stupid questions, I decided that in order to really get my point across that I should get more answers to back up my claim, and what better way to do that than organize a survey? Basically, I showed 25 people Camp Buddy, Scoutmaster Season, and Bachikoi characters and asked them to determine the characters' ages based on appearance. But right now, I'm gonna go over my answers that I got for the Camp Buddy characters, I'll go over the other ones in their respective segments of the video. So on that note, I'd like to present what I've gathered. Starting off with our protagonist, Katero, we've got 9 ages answered that were under 18 and 2 ages answered that were over 18. The majority vote on Kateru's age was 15, voted by 7 people, followed by 13, 16, and 18 at a tie for 3 votes, and lastly 2 people said he was 10. In comparison to Kateru's actual age being 19 and the majority vote stating 15, that's a 4 year age difference. Moving on to childhood friend Hero, there were 8 ages answered that were under 18 and 3 ages answered that were over 18. The majority vote was 15, voted by 5 people. Secondly, 14, 16, and 17, and 18 were at a tie for 3 votes. Lastly, 11 and 8, 13, oh my goodness, 13 <laughs> were at 2 votes. Going by the majority vote of 15 in comparison to Hero's actual age, which is 19. That is a four year age difference. Wow, what a pattern so far. Next up we have the withdrawn artist, Hunter. There were eight ages answered that were under 18 and one age answered that was over 18. So far, that looks like the most amount of underage guesses we've gotten on a character. Seven people guessed his age to be 14, which was the majority. In second place, it was just six, 16 and 13 at a tie for four votes. Lastly, 10, 12, 17, and 19 were tied at two votes for each of them. Comparing the majority result in Hunter's real age, that, that's 18 by the way, um, that'll be a third time we've got ourselves a four year age difference. Now we got nearly normal Natsume. He was one of the characters that had the most answers guessing him to be over 18 which is 5, as for his guesses that were under 18, that would be 3. The majority guessed he's 17, voted by 6 people, followed by 5 people voting his age as 16, and lastly 4 people assumed it to be 18. Ah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Looking at 17 being the majority vote and announced me's age being 20, that's a 3 year age difference. Finally, we broke the pattern! The last of the main love interest in Camp Buddy is Lux Maxing Alpha Gyatmaster Yoichi. He had 5 ages answering him as under 18, and 6 ages guessed him as an adult. Most people guessed he was 15 at 5 votes, in 2nd place were 16, 17, and 18 at 4 Four votes, and thirdly, the remaining guesses all had one vote. Seeing as 15 is the main vote and Yoichi's canon age being 20, we've got the biggest age difference so far being 5 years. Moving on to the antagonist, we'll start off with Taiga. He had 7 ages guessing he's under 18 and 3 ages answered that he's over 18. The most votes were 5 for 15, followed by 14 and 16 at 14. 
four four <laughs> answers <laughs> lastly 10 13 and 17 were Se and 19, 19 included in that, I'm sorry. Um, we're at a tie of two. Since 15 got the most votes, that'll be a four year age difference again. Looks like we've got quite the pattern going on with the age 15. Now we have Edward, who has five underage answers and two answers stating he's an adult. Seven people assumed his age should be 16. The second most common answer was 14 at six votes, and lastly, 17 at five answers. Considering Edward's age, which is 19, the most common answer, that's an age difference of three years. Here's our last antagonist, Big Brain Lee. He's got seven underage answers and one adult answer. Seven people voted his age of 12, with six votes for 13, and lastly, three guesses for 11. Forget what I said earlier about Yuichi having the biggest age difference because comparing Lee's age is 19 and the majority stating he's 12, that's a contrast of seven years. Next, we got side character Seto with six underage answers and one adult answer. There's three ages at first place with six votes, which are 15, 16, and 17. Next, there's 18 at four votes, 12, 13, and 14 are tied at one vote. I can't get an exact age difference this time because there's three ages in first place, so um, I'm just... Yeah, there's, it's possible. It could be anywhere from one to three years of a difference. Lastly, we have Felix, who's the last Camp Buddy character I'll have to go over. He's the only character with all underage guesses, so Hunter no longer takes the place of most underage votes. In first place, we have six votes for 14, followed by 16 and 13 at a tie for four votes. 11, 12, 15, and 17 are the remaining answers at a tie of two votes. As for the age difference, that's four years again. Looking at what I gathered in those surveys, the most common answer for the characters to be guessed was 15. The oldest age we got from the majority's votes was 17, while the youngest was 12. That by itself is very telling. I will give credit where credit is due though. Despite the fact that Natsumi and Yoichi got underage votes for the majority answers, there were a lot of people guessing that they were of age. But it still comes out to a net negative, because once you add up the answers from Hunter, Felix, and Lee, along with the several times that the characters only had one to three adult guesses compared to several underage guesses, is really concerning. In addition to that, even the main character who has the most SFW work of everyone was guessed to be 15. That isn't a good conclusion to come to. Moving on to Scoutmaster season, this is the continuation of Camp Buddy where you play as Scoutmaster Yoshinori after the summer term has ended and you got yourself two love interests to choose from who were also featured in the last game. Scoutmaster season was released on April 1st, 2022, four years after Camp Buddy. Now, I'm gonna give Scoutmaster season a whole lot more credit than Camp Buddy because this time around we've got characters that actually look of age, but I wouldn't be here with an entirely separate section to talk about this game if I didn't have a problem with it. First off, this is something that Camp Buddy and Scoutmaster season have in common, which is characters having intimate relations while one of them is drunk. So on top of the Shotokan stuff, we've got lack of consent. Lovely. It's not even just insinuated that said characters are drunk. They're quite literally hiccuping and their words are slurred, showing that they're intoxicated. Despite this, rather than being a normal person, you know, not taking advantage of drunk people, you know exactly what Yoshinori and Keitaro do? Take advantage of drunk people! I think, or at least I hope, it's widely known that you're not consenting if you're under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Yet Miko-kun still has this disclaimer in his games. Secondly, this one's just unique to Scatmaster season, but there's these flashback scenes to when the characters are younger, and what a shocker! There's intimate content of them too. Now, like I said before, I'll stay true to my word on the fact that I give Scatmaster season a whole lot more credit than Camp Buddy, considering that Miko-kun made a whole lot less characters that look like minors this time around. But of course, since this is Miko-kun we're talking about, there's always gotta be Shotokan somewhere. Now, the character I'm talking about in these flashback scenes is Lloyd. Before I get into this, I know Lloyd's whole deal is the fact that he's meant to look younger than the rest of the cast, but he's actually older than everyone else, so Scatmaster Season can get some short jokes in. <laughs> you get it? Because he's short and- okay, oh my goodness, I, I don't know what I expected next time I tried making a stupid joke like that. Moving on, him and Darius have some NSFW content going on in the flashbacks. Once again, I get the whole point of the flashbacks is that the characters are going to be younger because it's a flashback to like nine years ago, but something didn't sit right with the younger versions of the characters. They always seem to look a bit too young to me at least, especially when it came to Lloyd. Speaking of judging whether or not a character is young, I'll take some time to go over the Scatmaster season pie charts. These are all the characters and their flashbacks. Starting with Ayn, there's four underage guesses and seven adult guesses, with 17 is the majority vote with four answers. 20 is at second place with three votes, and two people guessed it's 16 and 18 each. In comparison to his actual age being 18, people guessed him to be a year younger than his canon age. For Yoshinori, there are eight adult guesses and three underage guesses. 18, 20, and 21 are tied at four guesses, while 16 and 17 are at three votes, and lastly, 24 I was guessed by two people. Yoshinori's canon age is 20, which was one of the majority answers. As for Darius, we've got three underage guesses and five adult guesses. Seven people guessed his age is 17, while 16 and 18 are at five votes, and lastly, there's 19 and 20 at two votes. Darius is 20, and based on the majority vote is 17, that's a three-year age difference. Lastly, we have Lloyd with seven underage guesses and two adult guesses. 13 is in first place at 11 votes, 11 has three votes, and lastly, 9, 16, 17, and 18 are at two votes each. Now we've got the biggest age difference for Scatmaster season characters being eight years. 
Okay, I'm gonna be real with you guys right now. Bocce Koi is the section of this video that I've had the hardest time with since my research is a let's play that I watched like a year ago. So I'm probably gonna miss some stuff regarding this section. Fortunately, my friend TGP is also working on a video similar to this and he goes way more in depth with Bocce Koi. I'll link that video in the description. Okay, seriously though, I'm like way past overdue and getting around to the summary. So let's just start off on that. Bocce Koi is one of Miko-kun's older works. It was released in August of 2014. This is another visual novel dating sim with a lot of interesting content in it. I wouldn't care about that if it weren't for the fact that these guys like prepubescent. Miko-kun's name is all over this game in the credits. He makes references towards it in Camp Buddy and Scoutmaster season. He's way too proud of Bocce Koi and just evidently isn't afraid to show it. Moving on, Bocce Koi takes place in a school. Our protagonist this time around is Toshu and he joins the baseball team that has like two other members, said members being Masaru and Ichiru. And if you want to be weird, you can also include the baseball coach in that because unfortunately that's canon. Anyways, we're back with that lovely pattern of our characters wearing gakudans. As I've mentioned previously, that type of uniform is worn by middle to high school age students, so take that as you will. The main thing I wanted to talk about wasn't the Shotokan stuff because I've gone over that like a million times. What I've got a problem with is Genji. He's the baseball coach. He's constantly being a creep towards Toshu and Ichiru who look the youngest out of the main cast. Like when Ichiru said he didn't want to do stuff with Genji and Genji proceeded to call him mean for that. Like that makes sense. Shortly after that happened, Ichiru only gave in to doing stuff with him to get him to shut up about wanting to do it. It's probably a good time to mention that unlike the Camp Buddy and Scoutmaster season characters, I have no clue what the canon ages of the Bachi Koi characters are. I found Toshu and Ichiru on the Camp Buddy wiki and it says they're 17, but since this is a fandom wiki, we're talking about, I'm not gonna consider it canon until I find a better source to confirm it. So until that happens, I'll make you guys take a last look at these pie charts. Okay, we're starting it for their protagonist Toshu. He is one of age answer and eight underage guesses. In first place is 11 and 13 tied at five votes, that's followed by 15 at four votes, and lastly 10, 12, 14, and 17 are at two votes. With no canon age to compare the first place answers with, I'll be skipping that section. Moving on to Ichiru with solely underage guesses, the majority vote was 15 with five guesses, and second place was nine and 12 with four votes, and there's 16 with three answers. The last pie chart I have to show you is Masteru's with seven adult answers and three underage guesses. Six people guessed him as 18, then there was four votes for 20 and three answers for 21. I'm gonna move on to something that may be a disturbing topic to some, so I'm gonna warn you now. I'm gonna be discussing a scene in Bachi Koi that is very lacking of consent. Skip to the time on screen if you want to avoid that. Remember that character Genji? Yeah, he practically violates Toshu. So in this scene, Toshu directly states to Genji several times he doesn't want to do stuff with him, and he still continues to do so. Not to mention the facial expressions that Toshu makes as Genji does this. He literally cries at one point. I'm pretty sure it's widely accepted that those are very evident signs to stop. So that's Bachikoi for you. I guess it's about time I went over the Camp Buddy journal. It's about the game development, behind the scenes, character lore, fun facts, route guides, etc. Starting off at journal entry number two in the project vision section, Miko-kun states he wanted to make a lighthearted BL game in a setting that would force the characters to interact and engage in activities together. Okay, fair, but unfortunately Miko-kun made the horrible decision of the setting being a summer camp. So here's some setting slash scenario ideas I put together that could still allow the characters to interact and engage in activities together. University, workplace, neighborhood, small town, traveling, or even playing in a band together. I need to vent really quickly. This journal has jump scared me with pages upon pages of NSFW. I mean, what else was I supposed to expect though? Like one second I'll be reading a character description, I scroll down a page just to get flashed. Okay, but in all seriousness though, despite all the reading and taking notes and stuff, I hate to say this, but I've gathered nothing relevant. And if I have, I already mentioned it somewhere in here earlier. Maybe I haven't gathered much because I didn't end up reading through the whole thing, but by the time I was at 85 pages, I quit because it didn't look like I was gonna find much else. Besides, I've read through this thing before, so maybe that gives me partial credit. But to make up for that, I'll share some of my additional findings from Miko Kun's Twitter, Facebook, and Pixiv. Before I move on from this section, I want to say I didn't find the original Twitter post that I'm showing here. It was screenshot from another account that posted it onto Twitter that I found while I was digging around for information. But I can confirm that the Facebook and Pixiv posts are ones that I screenshotted, so I'm not sure if the Twitter replies are fabricated, because I tried looking around for them, so either they got deleted or it just never happened. Before I end up this video, I have a lot of people to thank. For one, the 25 people I surveyed. I'm so sorry to the few of you who looked up where the characters came from. Secondly, Muffin and Cauliflower. They were the Boy Scouts who I interviewed. I'm also thankful to Roman who provided the research for the history of Shotokan. I'd like to thank the proofreaders for their suggestions and advice. But most importantly, I'd like to thank TGP. I was so slow with progress for this video. Like for reference of how slow I was, I'm pretty sure I started working on this in like late August. When I was talking with TGP about how he was making a similar video, I think I came to this great revelations. 
something like, holy shit, I'm fucking slow. So that really motivated me to pick up the pace on this. Okay, but seriously though, if it weren't for him, you'd probably be seeing this video like a few months from now. As for my last words on Camp Buddy, in conclusion, Miko Kun is a Shotokan connoisseur. I could have been in a few more arguments or information if I searched hard enough, but this video has been on and off progress for months, so it's fair to say I just want to have this released already. At least I can know I finally got this message out. Despite how long this took, I think it was worth it. And on that note, I'd like to end this rant. Later, ladies and gents, jades and spades, I'll be heading out now. Bye!